From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. I have your call to the Corazon de Los Angeles Hospital in Tijuana, Mexico. Good, operator. One moment. Hello? Oh, this is Dr. Fernando Hernandez. I'm Johnny Dollar, investigating the wreck of the yacht, the Jolly Roger. The only survivor reported was a cabin boy, and I understand he just died in your hospital. Gee, uh, uh, yes, but under most unusual circumstances, Senor Dollar. That's exactly what I wanted to know. Also, Senor, there are some things he told me earlier that I think you ought to know. Doctor, I'm on my way down there to Tijuana to see you. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar. Location, San Diego, California. To the Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Assignment, the Jolly Roger fraud. $460,000 worth of palatial yacht gone down to Davy Jones' locker. Expense account item 9, 40 cents, telephone call. To the hospital in Tijuana from a phone booth at Coast Guard headquarters here in San Diego. Because of the knack Paula Zanagian seemed to have for knowing everything I did, everyone I talked to, even on the telephone... I was afraid to let my call go through, even the Coast Guard switchboard. But before leaving for Tijuana, I checked with Jan Penny and talked briefly again with Lieutenant Smith. You mean you think Zanagian had somebody put that cabin boy out of the way before you could talk with him, Dollar? The doctor only said that he died under unusual circumstances. But yes, that's exactly what I think. What's more important right now is that apparently the lad told the doctor a thing or two before he died. So I'm going on down there. You want to use my car? Well, Zanagian seemed to know I was going to use it before. He'll probably expect me to use it now. So you better give me a rental car. Have it delivered to my hotel, service entrance, under your name. Okay. Zanagian made no bones about it when I talked to him. He's having me tailed. And he'll probably try to do the same thing to me that he did to Bert Parker, once he's sure I'm trying to block his $460,000 claim. Dollar. But me? I aim to stay alive. Until I can not only prove his claim of fraud, but see him sent up for murdering Parker and the lads who went down with the Jolly Roger. Dollar, why don't you get the police in on this with you? If your life's in danger... Uh, I want to do it alone. Hey, one more thing. Yeah? You're sure that Zanagian needed money? I thought from all I've ever heard that that international racketeer was loaded. According to the papers, both Holland and Switzerland locked up his bank accounts just within the last week or so. That's why he needs a pot full of cash to get over there. That's why he sank his ship so he could collect from your insurance company. Yeah. Accident. Some mechanical failure. Is that what he said? Uh Uh-huh. Something to do with the electrical system, to use his own words. But if the cabin boy was the only survivor of the explosion, and he didn't talk to anybody... Except this Dr. Hernandez I'm going to see. Right. Then how could Zanagian know what made his yacht burn and sink? What's your guess? Expense account item 10, $50. Deposit on rental car. On the way back to the hotel to pick it up, I kept looking for somebody that I could identify as the tails an Egan had put on me. But if he was there, I couldn't tag him. And as I drove the few short miles from San Diego to Tijuana, I began to wonder if maybe I was just too small fry for Paula Zanagian, shipping magnet, munition maker, international spy, to bother with. Nonetheless, I still kept an eye out for a familiar face, or more to the point, for a familiar car that might be following me. Midday traffic on the big broad highway was astonishingly sparse. A handful of tourist-type cars loaded with families on the way across the border for a quick look-see at Mexico. A handful of movers who were on their way to see how far and how long their American dollars would keep them in favorably exchanged Mexican pesos. Some smart Cadillacs, some of them towing outboard runabouts and filled with eager-eyed fishermen. And the usual run of trucks, big trucks and trailers. The boys who made a living behind the wheel, the best drivers on the road, wherever they were loaded with goods for transport between states or countries or what have you. I drove fast, I drove slowly, and I still didn't see any car that might have been following me. To make sure, I took off on a gravel side road, drove a mile or more, and waited. Nobody followed me. So I finally gave up and went back to the main highway. At the border, I asked the guards where the Corazon de los Hongales hospital was, drove the car to it, parked in back, and asked the first nurse I could find, and I should have stopped right there because she was beautiful, Asked her where Dr. Hernandez hung out. 
Hernandez spoiled a beautiful romance in the budding and led me into his office. Please do sit down, Senor Dollar. Thanks, Dr. Hernandez. I'm so glad you've come. We here at the hospital, I must confess, were somewhat concerned when the fishermen brought in the poor young cabin boy who survived the wreck of the... Uh, what was his name? The Jolly Roger? Yeah, that's right. Zanagian couldn't have picked a better one. So? Jolly Roger is the name of the flag that pirate ships used to fly, skull and crossbones. I suppose you know. See, uh, I know he was a glorified pirate preying on the whole world. I'm a student of history, senor, modern as well as ancient. And in his small, selfish way, I realize that Paulus Anagian has looted the whole world. A dangerous man. You say you were worried when his cabin boy showed up. Because there was a man who called and wished to visit him, insisted on it. Oh? See, si, but of course, because of his condition, we could not permit it. The explosion of the ship had done a great deal of damage to his small body. When he was brought in here, I could see that immediate surgery was necessary to save his life. Well, go on, Doctor. So I operated. And as I did so, I realized that divine providence would permit me to save the life of this poor unfortunate. My operation was a success. But you told me over the phone that he died. We are a poor hospital, and usually we're not able to provide such things. But I appointed a special nurse to look after Doctor, him I, while I ordered that man who would not give his name but who insisted on seeing him be kept away. Doctor, you said... However, two hours ago, the nurse left him only for a brief moment and only to inform me of the remarkable improvement he'd made. Look, and Doctor... When I entered his room, he was dead. Look, Doctor, I'm, I'm sorry if you lost your patient, of course, but you told me over the phone that there was something unusual about his death. That's why I came down here. He would have lived. He would have lived, Senor Zola. Yes, I know. Except that... that someone got into the room with him during the brief moment he was left alone. Got into him and killed him with this... What is it? A knitting needle? I think so. He would have been well again, senor, but he was killed, murdered. Have you told the police about this? See, si, and they are what you call uh, at a loss. Oh, brother. Well, how do you think I feel? I was going to tell them what I knew about the unfortunate boy when your telephone call came. Then I decided perhaps I'd best talk to you first. Well... Just what is it you know about him? It is what he knew about the sinking of the boat. The Jolly Roger. See, si. Thanks to adrenaline and other stimulants I administered even before we began the anesthetic for the operation that saved his life. Only it didn't stay so long. See, si. He regained consciousness long enough to talk with me. He talked a great deal. Well? Well, Doctor, what did he tell you? My notes, I... Get very careful notes in this drawer. And... What is it, Doctor? What's the matter? The notes I had, they're gone. Gone? Here. I kept them here because I knew they'd help to solve the crime of the singing of the ship. Well, what did this boy tell you? Notes or no notes, Doctor? You must remember something of what he told you. Well, see, uh, yes. Well, what? That he'd seen a strange device taken aboard the ship. He was young and curious, as all boys are. Yeah? Uh, that only the captain of the vessel had handled it, had taken it to the engine room. That he had inquired about it and been told to mind his own affairs. Oh, what kind of a device was it? Did he tell you? Uh, like a clock, he said. A huh? clock on a large box, like an alarm clock. It was set for 2.35. Two th he hold everything... That was the time the Coast Guard patrol plane saw the explosion. I knew that. Why, go on, Doctor. That, Senor Dollar, is all. Well, I don't know about you, but it sounds to me like Zanagi and one of his men are both planted a time bomb in the engine room of that yacht. Oh, see? No. Now, wait a minute. Yes? If the captain knew about it... Hey, look, Doctor, the U.S. Coast Guard reported that the only survivor was this cabin boy. Now, surely the captain wouldn't have let himself get blown up. No, he would not accept for one thing. Yeah? 
And I tell you only what I know from the cabin boy. Oh, yeah, what's that? This trip was a test. Before the ship, uh, the yacht was to go on a long trip. It had many new uh, de devices on it. Uh -huh. A large, tall mast for what you call a radar. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. The captain, when they reached a point of the Coronado Islands, ordered a small boat put, uh, how do you say, over the side. Yeah, that's right, go on. But in doing so, the mast, the radar mast, fell down, and the captain was struck by it. Therefore... Doctor, doctor, now listen, listen carefully. Tell no one you've talked to me. Tell your local police, if you like, what you learned from the cabin boy. Report it to your Coast Guard or whatever you have to do down here in Mexico. But don't, under any circumstances, let anyone know you've talked to me. I do not understand, senor. You wonder where your notes on the cabin boy are? Well, if you ask me, he's an Aegean is looking them over right now. Impossible. Nothing is impossible with a guy like him. Now, what I'm getting at is this. I'm a marked man, doctor. He's after me. And he'll be after anybody who tries to help me. I cannot believe it. Well, you'd better, if you want to stay in one piece. So take no chances. I don't think I was followed down here, but I may have been. If so, your life is in danger, same as mine. So please, watch your step. Until I can pin whatever it takes on Zanegi and to send him up for life. Oh, this is fantastic. Yeah, sure it is. But outside of you and a girl named Jan Penny and... Doctor, may I use that phone of yours for a call across the border? Well, of course. They're here. Thanks. Hello? Hello, operator. I want to call Coast Guard headquarters in San Diego, California. Lieutenant John Smith. You know something? Your Mexican operators speak as good English. Hello? Yes, thank you. You seem alarmed, Senor Dollar. Are you Doc, sure? Doc, I just hope you find no cause for alarm before this mess is over. But I say it again. Watch your step. The mere fact that you've talked with me that... Hello? Oh, where can I reach him? Well, sure, I'll talk to anybody there at headquarters. Hello, I'm... I'm calling Lieutenant John... I see. Thanks. What is it, Mr. Dollar? Lieutenant Smith is dead. K what? A hit-and-run accident. About an hour after I left him. Watch your step, Doctor. See? And you too, Senor Dollar. Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's intriguing episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, some real help from two close friends. You know, close enough to kill. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote tonight's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.